Give him praise, give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Bless his holy name. Is worthy of all the praise, is worthy of all the glory, is worthy of all the honor. Thank him. Bless his name. Father, we celebrate you. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the adoration. Thank you and thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. You are worthy, Father. Now begin to ask him to speak to you this morning. Lord, I've come here for an encounter with you. Speak directly to me by your word. I've come here to be transformed by you. Speak directly to me by your word. Let your word come forth and establish my change of story. Blessed be your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Our Father, we have come before you this morning with gratitude in our hearts for your faithfulness and for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being in your presence. Your word says, Bless is the man you choose and cause to approach you, that you may fill him with the goodness of your house. And therefore, we are before you again asking that you will fill us again. Yeah. You have called this our covenant day of restoration. For all that may have been lost, let this be the day of restoration. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, send your word with power and glorify yourself in our midst. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please be seated in his presence. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. That shall be your experience in the name of Jesus. Our line of teachings for this month in our Sunday services has been commanding signs and wonders from the platform of a revival. Commanding signs and wonders from the platform of a revival. And by way of reminder this morning, we are drawn back to this very important fact that the midst of the year is ordained by God as a revival season in his agenda. In Habakkuk chapter 3, God's word declares in verse 2, it says, Revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. According to the word of God, therefore, the midst of the year is the season of revival. But it's important that we also recognize that we must stay spiritually awake to make the most of every revival season. It's important to note that seasons don't change us. It is what we do with seasons that change us. Today we have certain crops that are already producing fruits. Those who planted in the planting season are harvesting returns in the harvest season now. For example, you are seeing corn that is coming out. Somebody planted it in the planting season and is harvesting it in the harvesting season and getting returns from the harvest now. The season did not change him. It is what he did with the season that changed him. Those who watch in the season where they should labor, they will pay in the season while others harvest. Have you not noticed that the person who planted in the planting season will always have a return of money in the harvesting season? But the one who did not plant in the planting season will always have to pay money in the harvesting season. So one season increases one and the same season decreases the other. It is not the season that changes us. It is what we do with the season that changes us. That is why it's not enough to say, oh, we're in the midst of the year. And therefore, I know that something is going to happen for me. God is saying what you do with the season is what determines what happens for you. My prayer for each one of us is that in this season, the grace to engage 
profitably. May that grace come upon each one of us. Amen. If you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. I said the grace to engage profitably. May that grace come upon each one of us. Amen. Now, very quickly, what is a revival? Let us begin to look at the scriptural description of a revival. What is a revival? A revival is a move of the spirit across the people of all ages culminating in supernatural turnaround. It is a move of the spirit across people of all ages culminating in the supernatural turnaround. In Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and 29, look at what God's word declares. It tells us there, and it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon how many flesh? All flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And verse 29, we are told there, it says not only that, but upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, the young, the old, the bond, the free. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So it is a move of the spirit that sweeps across all category of people, the young, the old, the bond, the free, no matter their situation. In other words, every time you talk about a revival, it carries something potent for every individual. No matter your state, no matter your stage, no matter your level, no matter your situation, no matter your circumstance. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 44 verse 3 down to verse 5, God's word declares, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and I will pour floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thy offspring. And verse 4, they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. And verse 5, one shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. Another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and so name himself by the name of Israel. It is a move that goes across generations. A move that grows across, across stratas of society. That's why I have good news for you. This move of the spirit will reach out to every department of your own life. Amen. You believe it, say loud amen. amen. I said you believe it, say loud amen. amen. You recall when Peter went to the house of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. In verse 24, we are told that he brought to him all of his friends, all of his near neighbors, everyone that was close unto him, family members and so forth. And verse 44, the Bible says that while Peter spake, the Spirit of God fell upon all them, all them, their stage or state notwithstanding. Today, I see that same spirit falling upon your life. Yeah. You believe it, say loud amen. Yeah. I said, you believe it, say loud amen. Yeah. So it sweeps across everyone, whether old, young, whether educated, uneducated, no matter the stage of life, God's spirit sweeps over every category in the midst of revival. That means there is no excuse to be excluded. There is no excuse to be excluded. You are only excluded by choice. There is no excuse to be excluded. The moment you position yourself, no matter your stage or state, you are able to be a partaker of what God has in store for this season. My prayer for each one of us is that from this day, the grace to remain in position to take delivery of what this prophetic season has to offer, I see that grace being manifested upon us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Very quickly, a revival is said to occur when the following takes place. One, when praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes a delight. When praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes a delight. A revival is said to take place when praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes a delight. 
Jesus teaching us to pray in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and verse 10 in particular. He said, after this manner, pray, our Father who art in heaven. He said, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. So we see here Jesus teaching us the pattern of prayer. And he told us there to make kingdom advancement a priority. And the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew 6 and verse 6, it says, when you pray, enter into your closet and your father, which see it in secret, he will reward you openly. When we talk about the revival, we are talking about the season where people want to, they, they have a desire, an unquenchable thirst to continue to advance the kingdom of God with delight. A revival makes you delight in the Lord. You delight in his demands. You delight in his commandments. Psalm 112 verse 1, he said, Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. That's a revived man. That's a revived woman. An individual that delights in what God demands. God says, I demand that you stand on the altar of prayer. He said, you delight in it. When praying kingdom advancement prayer becomes your delight, then indeed you are, a you are in a revival. So a man or woman that is in a revival is one that delights in praying kingdom advancement prayers. Their heart is moved towards the advancement of the kingdom of God. We have heard the testimony of our father. He said that how that all the years he would go down up to the mountains to go and pray. There was never once a prayer for himself. It was always the advancement of the kingdom. When that becomes your delight, then indeed you are in a revival. So a man or woman that is in revival is one that is continuously, you know, passionate about advancing the kingdom on the altar of prayer. I see that grace coming afresh upon somebody here. If you are the one, say louder, amen. Number two is when one is consumed with undying passion to see souls saved. When one is consumed with an undying passion to see souls saved. The Bible tells us in the book of, in the book of John chapter 15 and verse 16. It says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. That you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it unto you. So Jesus said, I have ordained you for a particular purpose. What is that purpose? To go and bring forth fruit. And look at what Paul said in response to that commandment. Romans 1 verse 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. I am not ashamed. He was passionate for the advancement of the kingdom of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16, this same Paul the apostle put it this way, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. He said, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. He was a man that was enraptured in zeal for the advancement of the kingdom by the preaching of the gospel. A passion to see souls saved is the evidence of genuine revival. The question you must ask yourself is this. When you see men passing on the street, what passes through your heart? When you see individuals going into the bear parlor, what passes through your heart? Are you just laughing at the fact that look at, look at these people wasting their lives? What is it that passes through your heart when you see a colleague at the office who you know is not saved? What concern are you carrying in your heart? A man that is revived is continuously conscious of the state of souls. They are passionate for the salvation of souls. Shout hallelujah. It keeps them continuously under a heavenly dimension of drive to see that souls are saved. My prayer is that for each one of us from this day onward, that will become our own experience. You know what Jesus said in John chapter 4 and verse 34? He said, my meat is to do the work of him that sent me and to finish his work. What was that work? The recovery of souls. The salvation of souls. My, work, my meat is to do the work. So Jesus said, what eating is to you is what saving souls is to me. 
A man that is revived, a woman that is revived, is one that is passionate to see souls saved. I pray today that a fresh dimension of zeal, a fresh dimension of passion, a fresh dimension of drive will come upon you for this in the name of Jesus. A number of years ago, God servant our father I shared this testimony. He said how he came back on a flight from Madagascar in you know quite a number of hours flight. And as soon as he arrived, he got home, changed his clothes, and dived out to the harvest field. Why? Somebody still must be saved. That's passion. That's drive. Many times the individuals that God sends us their way, that may be their last chance. When you find a man that is revived, they are continuously driven towards the salvation of souls. I pray for somebody here today that that same grace, that same drive, that same passion, the type that we have seen exemplified in our father in the faith here, that same will become your portion in the name of Jesus. You believe it, say a loud amen. Number three is when praying for the needs of others to be met becomes a way of life. It's when praying for the needs of others to be met becomes a way of life. Galatians 6 and verse 2. The Bible says, bear one another's burdens and in so doing, you fulfill the law of Christ. And what happens when we do that? Ephesians 6 and verse 8. He said, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. So as you are praying for the needs of others to be met, God begins to address your own needs. When you find a man or woman that is revived, they are continuously passionate about praying for the needs of others. They don't laugh at the situation of others, they pray about it. They don't go around announcing it either, they pray about it. You know, we live in a world where many people go around, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you. They're announcing it everywhere. Those who have enough time to make announcement everywhere, take note, they are not praying anywhere. Those who spend their time investing it in addressing the issues of others on the altar of prayer don't need to make announcement. They pray until they see a change in that life. And when they see a change, they give thanks unto God for it. Shout hallelujah. Today I see a fresh prayer grace coming upon each one of us. If you believe that that is you, say louder, amen. I said if you believe that that is you, say louder, amen. Now, what is in a revival for us? Let's address this quickly. What is in a revival for us? Number one, every revival is ordained to advance the church of Christ. Every revival is ordained to advance the church of Christ. Every revival. If you look at the book of the Acts of the Apostles, the revival began in Acts chapter 2. What was the manifestation? Verse 1 to 4, the Holy Ghost came down. Verse 41 3,000 souls were added to the church. Chapter 4 of Acts and verse 4, 5,000 were added to the church. Chapter 5 of Acts and verse 14, multitudes, both of men and women, were added to the church. Chapter 6 of Acts, verse 7, the Bible tells us the word of God increased. The number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. Chapter 9 of Acts, verse 34 and 35, the Bible says two towns turned unto the Lord. Chapter 13 of Acts and verse 44, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. It advances the church of Christ. And hear this, in the growth of the church, like God's servant and father said, is the glory of the saints. Why? I will multiply them. They shall not be few. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. So multiplication for the church, glorification for the saints. Those who engage in advancing the kingdom of God are partakers of the glory that is manifested through his people. For somebody here, I see you being a partaker of the same. The glory of God shall be manifested upon your life. If you believe that that is you, say louder, amen. I said if that is you, say louder, amen. Number two, in a revival, believers are rescued from the dungeon of Satan. In a revival, believers are rescued from the dungeon of Satan. Acts chapter 26 and verse, and verse 18, God's word declares, He said to turn them from darkness to light, from the 
power of Satan unto God that they may receive inheritance among them that are sanctified to turn them from darkness to light. Acts 26, 18. And to turn them from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified. So in other words, those who are held captive in the midst of a revival, their liberty is established. That's why we are told in Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 6, he said, he stood and he measured the earth and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His way is everlasting. I don't know what may have held you captive before now, but in this season, as you engage with God, every everlasting mountain shall be scattered. Amen. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I said every everlasting mountain shall be scattered. Amen. You believe it, say louder, amen. amen. Every everlasting mountain shall be scattered. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he rescues us from the dungeon of Satan. I see that becoming somebody's experience. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, signs and wonders accompany every engaging believer in a revival. Signs and wonders. It accompanies every engaging believer in a revival. In other words, when you see a man or woman that is engaging in a revival, you will see signs and wonders following them. That shall become somebody's experience here. If you are the one, say louder, amen. I said, that shall become somebody's experience here. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 17. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And verse 20 tells us, they went everywhere preaching, and God also walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. Signs follow those who are on the move for God. Those who are on the move for God. Those who are continuously engaged for God. I see that becoming somebody's experience here. <laughs> signs and wonders shall become your new identity. If you believe it, say louder, amen. I said, if you believe it, say louder, amen. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. Now, today is our covenant day of restoration. And I have good news for you this morning. Everything that you have lost to the locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar of destiny, today it shall be recovered. Yeah. You believe it, say loud, amen. Yeah. Now the word of God makes clear in the book of John chapter 10 and verse 10. It said, the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So according to scripture, there is a thief. In the book of Nahum chapter 2 verse 2, the Bible calls him the emptier. He said the emptiers have emptied. There is an agenda of the enemy to try to empty the destiny of the saint. But there is an agenda of God to restore all that has been taken. I don't know what has been taken from any department of your life. But today it shall be restored supernaturally. Yeah. You believe me? Say it louder. Amen. Yeah. I said today it shall be restored supernaturally. Yeah. In Zechariah chapter 1 beginning from verse 18. Look at what the Bible says. It said, and I lifted up my eyes and behold four horns. It says, and I said to the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he said, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Jerusalem, and Israel. It says in verse, verse 20, and the Lord showed me four carpenters. And he said in verse 21, Thus said the Lord, what are these carpenters come to do? He said, these are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to free them and to cast out the horns of the Gentiles. He said these horns came to scatter. All that has been organized for them, it came to scatter it. But he said, I've sent these four carpenters 
to fray the horns of the Gentiles so that there can be supernatural restoration. I don't know what may have been lost to the scatterers, to the emptiers, to the destroyers of destiny. But today, the God of this commission will restore you supernaturally. <laughs> somebody believe you say it louder, amen. amen. I said somebody believe you say it louder, amen. amen. And the season of revival is packaged by God peculiarly for the purpose of restoration among others. Remember that the season of revival is a season of blessing. Isaiah 44, we saw verse 3, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. I will pour floors upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. So it's a season of blessing. And one of the blessings packaged in the season of revival is the blessing of restoration. The blessing of restoration. In Joel chapter 2, the Bible tells us, begin from 21 to verse 27, we are told there what occurs in the midst of revival. It says, fear not, O land, and be glad, for the Lord will do great things. That will be somebody's testimony today. <laughs> be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. He said in verse 23, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he had given you the former rain moderately, but it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And verse 24, And the floor shall be full with wheat, and the fast will overflow with wine and with oil. And verse 25, What will happen? I will restore. I don't know what may have been lost before now, but it shall be restored. I said it shall be restored. I said it shall be restored. I will restore the years that the locust, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, instead of eating the great army that was sent before you. And look at verse 20, 26. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And verse 27, and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. I will restore, I will restore, I will restore. I don't know what may have been lost, but the God of restoration is restoring it on your behalf. things about among many others that God restores one is the restoration of years the restoration of what yes it said there verse 25 I will restore the years that the locusts have eaten I will restore the years that the locusts have eaten God is a specialist in restoring years God is a specialist in in restoring years among others we see him do it in the lives of many via a number of different avenues one way he restores years is he gives speed anytime you have lost time the answer to time lost is speed gained is that not true if you are running to somewhere and you are running late the only answer to make up the time lost is to gain speed. And what does God's word tell us about him? He said in Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 22, a little one shall become a thousand. A small one shall become a strong nation. And I, the Lord, will hasten it. Romans chapter 9 and verse 28 what does he say to us there? He said to us, and for he will finish the work. He will cut it short 
in righteousness. Because a short walk with the Lord make upon the end. For somebody here, God will give you speed. We had the testimony of somebody here who said, what God did in his life that year was more than 50 years of effort. For somebody here, God will give you speed. And by that 50 years, he accelerated him and restored the years. I don't know what may have been lost over the years, but by the speed of heaven, it shall be restored to you. I said, by the speed of heaven, it shall be restored to you. <laughs> Not only does he give speed, he also elongates time. He, elong he elongates time. He elongates time. We are told concerning Abraham. Abraham waited and waited and waited. It seemed like there was going to be no testimony. And at the age of 100, Abraham had a son. And somebody will say, Abraham, hey, yeah, look at the age at which he had the son. How will he enjoy the son? At the age of 100, he had the son. And the Bible tells us that Abraham lived 175 years. Which means the son of his old age was 75 years old by the time he died. God extended time. How about Job? Job lost everything. Nothing looked like it was ever going to be the same. But the Bible tells us concerning Job in Job chapter 42 and verse 13. Let's look at this. God's word declares concerning Job. He says he had seven sons and three daughters. And verse 14, he said concerning him, and he called the name of the first Jemima, the name of the second Kezia, the name of the third Kerafunak, and he said concerning Job, and verse 15, and in all the land there were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. And verse 16, and after this, say with me, after this, lived Job 140 years and saw his sons and his son's sons even four generations. Even four generations. I know a father will call his son, son. And he will call the grandson, grandchild. And he will call the one after that great grandchild. I'm not sure what he will call the fourth one. But Job was there for one two, three, four. Now listen to this. Whenever human beings run out of languages of description, it's because that description is not among their expectations. They say, okay, he can have a grandchild. He can have a great grandchild, but we don't expect anybody to be waiting after that. So they stopped at great grand. They ran out of language there. But God said, you can run out of description, but I will not run out of manifestation. For 140 years, he was there, seeing the first generation, the second generation, the third generation, the fourth generation. I don't know who the devil may have been whispering to, saying that you have run out of time. But God will give you speed, and God will extend your time. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. Secondly, God restores health. He restores health. Je Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 17. And I will restore health unto you and heal thee of thy wound. I don't know who it is that may have come into this place whose health may have been battered by the enemy. But the God of restoration is restoring your health today. You believe it? Say it louder. Amen. I will restore health unto you and heal thee of all of thy wounds. It doesn't matter what the situation may be in your body, but God is healing it all today. <laughs> he restores health. And what else does he restore? He restores 
glory. He restores what? Hallelujah. He restores glory. Ze 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 Zechariah, Zephaniah, sorry, chapter 3 and verse 17. The Lord in the midst of these mighty, that's a revival. And what will he do? Verse 19 and verse 20. It tells us there, Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee. I will save her that halted. I will gather her that was driven out. I will give them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Somebody say, Do it, Lord. At that time, I will bring you again. Even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes. That's what happens. So in the midst of the operation of God's restoration, which takes place at revival season, we find out that the glory of the saints is restored. I don't know what glory may have been lost over the years, but the glory of God shall be restored upon your life. Amen. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. amen. Don't forget that according to God's word, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. And the Bible said concerning Job, God blessed the later end of Job than the beginning. For somebody here, that shall become your testimony. <laughs> now, what do you and I need to do to secure and sustain God's restoration plan? What do we need to do? Let's take a number of things here from the word of God. Number one, one must be born again. One must be born again and remain so. One must be born again and remain so. For anyone to partake of the blessings of a revival, such as the blessing of restoration, you must be born again. Romans 8 verse 29 and verse 30. The Bible says, for whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate. And he called them to be conformed into the image of his son. And whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. So the blessings that accompany revival, which may be summarized in the word glory, among other things, answer to those who are saved. Until you are born again, you cannot be a partaker of the blessings that God has to offer in the season of revival. So one must be born again and remain so. Number two, we must receive and believe the word for our restoration. We must receive and believe the word for our restoration. In John chapter 1 verse 12, God's word declares, As many as received him, to them gave he power to become. So you must first receive and believe. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible said the word preached to them was also preached to us. But the word did not preach free them, not be mixed with faith in them that heard it. So not only must you receive it, you must believe it. You must receive and believe the word concerning your, your restoration. You must receive and believe it. It doesn't matter what the situation may look like now. Receive and believe it. No matter what has been said, receive and believe it. Shout hallelujah. It's so important. It is the word that we receive that can bring forth results. But for it to bring forth results, we must not only receive it, but we must believe every word, every word that we receive as it concerns our restoration. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. <laughs> Number three, we must be committed to serving God and the interests of his kingdom as our priority for living. We must be committed to serving God and the interest of his kingdom as our priority for living. Matthew 6 and verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto him. Be committed. That's the key to restoration. We had the testimony of one of us for who in 1997, what year? 1997, what year is it? He was wrongfully dismissed from his workplace by the schemings of some people. And he began to engage advancing the kingdom of God and received from this altar a word of prophecy. Now, 1997, 
he was wrongfully dismissed. 2017, he was called back to the same office. Now listen to this. Not only that, 97 to 2017 is how many years? 20 solid years. All the salary, the increments, the promotions, and the benefits of 20 years was paid to him at that same time. That is the God of restoration at work. Indescribable. Cannot be understood. But God can restore the years. I don't know what may have been lost. But as you are standing engaging with God in this season. The God that can restore the unimaginable. Will restore on your behalf. Just like that. From being, from being made a mockery to becoming an envy by the God of restoration. For somebody in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, there will be such a dramatic change of soul. <laughs> I love how I put it in that book of Joel. He said, I will give you the rain and the latter rain. I will give you the first former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So he can do it at the immediate time. For somebody that to become your own testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said that will become your own testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, we must engage the blood of the covenant. Against all satanic resistances. Engage the blood. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 11 and verse 12. As for thee also by the blood of the covenant. I have set for thy prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. Turn you to your stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare, I will render or restore double unto you. So as we engage the blood, we can dislodge the assault of the enemy and ensure and enforce our restoration. And what a joy will be partaking of the communion. The blood will bring restoration for you. Amen. And finally, number five, we must be committed to praying for the well-being of others. Be committed to praying for the well-being of others. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 8. Whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. Job prayed for his friends and God restored him. Job chapter 42 and verse 10. He prayed for his friends and God restored him and gave him twice as much as he had before. And God blessed the latter end of Job than the beginning. That shall be somebody's testimony here. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lift your hand to heaven and give glory to God for his word. That you have received this morning. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Jesus, thank you. Blessed be your name. You are worthy of praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Before we go any further this morning, there are those who are here who have not yet surrendered to Jesus. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Until you are saved, you are not safe. This restoration package is available but for only those who are in Christ. Therefore, this morning, if you are not yet born again and you want to receive Jesus as Lord, you want to make him the Lord and the Savior of your life, this is your opportunity right now. Wherever you are, I want you to quickly rise on your feet now. You want to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior? You want to become the master of your life? You want to begin to enjoy the blessings of salvation the thief comes to steal to kill to destroy but jesus came so that you can have life wherever you are you want to surrender to jesus quickly rise on your feet right now quickly rise on your feet don't let anything hold you down this is your opportunity thank you jesus now there are also those who need to rededicate their lives to christ something has gone wrong somewhere you know it inside of you you have lost genuine fellowship with god you may be in church but you are not truly in touch you have, your heart has gone cold. You don't, you don't have the relationship with God that you used to have. And you want to return to him so that you can be restored by him. Jesus is knocking the door of your heart right now. If you are ready to do that, you want to return. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Quickly also rise on your feet. I want to pray with you. Quickly. All over this place. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. They are rising everywhere. God bless you. Are you clapping for Jesus? They are rising everywhere. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Don't let anything hold you back. Quickly, on your feet right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. Now, suspend filling your form right now. Those in the first and second call, suspend filling your form. And just lift up your right hand before God. Lift up your right hand before God. 
and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. Lift up your right hand and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, loud and clear, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. But I know you died for me. On the third day, you rose again just to save me. Jesus, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. I will follow you, no turning back. I will serve you, no turning back. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, I thank you today for these precious ones. They have responded to your call. Now, give them grace to keep following you all the days of their lives and never turn back. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Congratulations. It's a brand new day for you. Please complete your forms, submit it to the official closest to you, and then you'll be reached by the outreach office to know the closest location to you for your foundation class, as was earlier announced. You attend just two Mondays, tomorrow Monday and the upper Monday, and you have a glorious foundation for a wonderful walk with the Lord. Once again, congratulations. It's a new day for you. Shall we all rise, everybody, and give Jesus a big hand of praise as we get set to receive his blessing? Make it bigger for Jesus.